Welcome to Kevin Dale Photography, where I take you on my journey through photography. On today's episode, I'm going to take you through the steps to set up your Canon R50 for portrait photography. I'm pleased to announce that I'm launching three Capture One style packs, Metamorphic Portraits, The Sound of Silver, and Rangefinder. These will eventually also be available for Lightroom, so if you go to kevindealphotography.com, scroll to the bottom of the homepage, and join my mailing list, I promise I won't send you spam, but I will let you know the second these release. And now, on to today's episode. Welcome to today's episode. If you're not familiar with Kevin Deal Photography, we do gear reviews, tips, tutorials, and techniques, and in some cases, we dive into film. If any of that sounds appealing to you, click the subscribe button below. So I'm sure if you are watching this video, you're probably a beginner to the Canon R50. And if you wanna hear my in-depth thoughts on the Canon R50, I did do an in-depth review. So check that out if you're interested. But today's video is a very focused video. It's a tips, tutorial, and technique video. As I say at the beginning of all my episodes, and it's gonna be geared toward a beginner using an R50, and I'm gonna use the RF 50 millimeter just for the demonstration, but you could use many different lenses for portraiture. And I'm just gonna show you how to set up the buttons and the dials and all that so you can have greater success for portrait photography. So let's dive right in. So philosophically speaking, when I set up any camera for portraiture, and I normally shoot on an R5 and an R8, which I'm recording myself with right now, I always wanna have the exposure triangle super close to the front part of the camera and to my index finger. Now, you may shoot in aperture priority or you may shoot in shutter priority. Uh, in today's demonstration, I'm gonna show you how to do this in full manual and you can of course adapt to aperture priority where you control the aperture and then the camera automatically adjusts the shutter speed or shutter priority where you control the shutter speed. And then based off the shutter speed you select the ISO you're at, your camera then selects the aperture. So for this demonstration, you put your camera into manual mode, uh, you turn your camera on, you press the menu button, and then you will navigate to the kind of orangish menu. So when you go over, it's, you know, you have your uh, camera, autofocus, your images, uh, your data transfer, the little wrench icon. You wanna go to that camera icon. You wanna navigate over to tab number two, and then you go into customize buttons. Now, the very first button you see, they give you the option to have your uh, shutter release be metering and AF start. I recommend just leaving it right there. Hit okay to set. Then when you go to the next one, that is your by default record button. I actually recommend you change this if you're gonna be shooting stills. So what I do in that mode is I actually make that my AF area. And there are reasons why I make that my AF area because sometimes I wanna have face and eye detect, but sometimes there's several people and there's gonna be somebody running through a zone. And so I wanna very quickly uh, set it to a zone focus that is different than just eye detect. The next button, ISO, I leave default as ISO because that's right next to my shutter release. So it's right next to where my index finger is. Moving to the back of the camera, uh, the AE lock button, I actually reassign that to AF off. The reason I assign this to AF off is because when I know I have my focus locked in and I no longer want my camera to focus on things, I just press that back button and it just locks in the focus and then I can take my picture. I don't have to worry about it throwing it off or any of that. Now you may notice the button below that, the AF point selection index reduce button isn't assignable. However, when you have eye detect on and you press that button, you'll see two arrows, a right and a left arrow pop up. And if you use your directional pad, it'll switch between the left and the right eye. You can also use it to switch between various subjects. One other pro tip I do want to give you is that if you are using that box for zone focusing, I actually recommend you turn on your touch and drag settings so you can just drag your thumb to move the box around while you have your eye up to the electronic viewfinder. You simply go to your menu, you go over to the second area of AF, 
Then you go over to tab number three, you go to touch and drag AF settings, and you simply turn it on. Now, I personally like to go to my active touch area, and I like to assign that to the bottom right because I just want to keep my thumb in the lower right quadrant of the screen to move my AF point around. Moving on to the next button, the up directional pad. I actually assign that between one shot and servo. One shot, of course, is meant for stationary objects and servo is meant to follow your subject around. To me, that is a button I regularly access when shooting portrait photography. Moving on to the left button, uh, I actually have that assigned to eye detection because sometimes I do want eye detect to kick in. When I go to the right button, I actually assign that over to drive mode because sometimes you need to shoot things in bursts. Sometimes you need to shoot one shot at a time. Sometimes you may need to set up a timer. Moving on to the bottom directional pad, I actually assign that to resetting my box to the center. If I find myself doing zone focusing, I'm using that box, I'm moving that box around and I just wanna set it to the center, I simply do that by pushing the down directional pad. Now, one of the reasons why I love using Canon RF glasses is because they have the built-in control rings, and you probably have noticed that I have not yet addressed aperture. I love to assign aperture to the control ring on my RF lenses because now my exposure triangle, I have ISO here, I have shutter speed here, and then I have my aperture right here. Then when I wanna change what I'm focusing in my zone setup, my zone focusing, I can hit that with the record button. So all that's kind of located in this primary area. And then the real estate right here is kind of my secondary. And then this is my tertiary area. And so these are the three main areas I wanna access with my hand because the secondary and tertiary areas are incredibly easy to access with my thumb. And the primary area is easy to access with my index finger. So to set that aperture, just like before, you go over to the sixth menu to the right, that kind of brownish orangish menu, you go over to tab number two. And instead of customizing buttons, you go down to customize control ring. And then when you select that, you just scroll over until you see the AV icon, which is your aperture. And if you find yourself running out of buttons you wanna assign, rest assured if you just hit the quick menu button in the middle of the directional pad, you can access additional features like your subject to detect, raw and JPEG, metering mode, anti-flicker, your white balance, your picture style, your creative filters, and more. And that's really how I set this guy up for portraiture. I try to keep it simple. I know a lot of you who are purchasing this camera are beginners, and this camera does have some powerful features built into it. And so I don't want you to be afraid to go into that camera, mess with those features, because they'll help improve your photography. That does it for today's episode. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching today. If you found this content to be useful, you found it to be helpful, tell me about it in the comments below. How do you set up your R50 for portraiture? Also, tell me about that in the comments below. And if you like this channel, I humbly ask you to click the subscribe button below. And if you like my opinions and they're more uncensored versions, you want to hear my unfiltered opinions about photography and videography related subjects, I highly recommend you go check out the F11 Photography Podcast, which can be found on all major platforms, including Apple and Spotify. And until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.